All right. Yes. I can send you that. Ew. What? Yeah, look at her face. Yeah, we got it. like. Like, kind of and I hear, like, yeah, I'm like, 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 i am um, so last time we learned if you had the R and the theta, we converted to X and Y. Do you remember that? Maybe. Okay. So today we're going to learn to go the opposite direction. So you'll have the X and the Y. You'll be converting into R theta. So let's start off just putting some points on the graph. Okay. A Cartesian coordinate is the same as a rectangular coordinate and remember that rectangular coordinates are x comma y just like your very first grid here so four negative two can you place that on your grid so four would be the x negative two would be the y your point would end up right there one more point negative three zero Go to the left three, up and down zero. That would end up right here. Okay, that is the type of graphing that you've been doing since eighth grade. Okay, your polar coordinate system, remember that it's an R and a theta. Remember that R is the radius length or what ring you should be on. And then theta is your angle measurement. But remember, you always start from here and then you rotate this way for positive angles. So if I'm doing three comma 150, I would go out to the third ring, one, two, three, and then I would follow that around to 150 degrees would be here. That would be three comma, what? what? <laughs> Are you good? <laughs> okay, so three comma 150 would be right there. Okay, let's look at the next example. You have a negative radius. So we're still gonna find the angle first. So I want 210, that's here. But then if I have a negative on my radius, do I go towards that angle or away? Away. So if 210 is this way, then I'm gonna go this way. How many rings? One. Only one. So that would be right there for negative one comma 210. All right, you have one more left. Notice it's still a coordinate plane. The only difference is um, that you're doing it in radians now. So will you mark four comma three pi fourths? Remember, this is the radius, this is the theta. So three pi fourths is that center diagonal here, and I wanna be on the fourth ring. So one, two, three, four. Versus if I want three pi fourths comma negative two, I'm counting the rings away into the opposite quadrant. So rather than going this way towards three pi fourths, what am I going towards instead? So it'd be seven pi fourths, yeah? So I'd end up on the second ring. So that'd be one, two right here. Okay, so last time we went from this one to this one. Now we're going to go from x, y into polars. So let me show you how to do it. Take a look at number one. It says convert the Cartesian point 2 comma 6 into the polar point. So this is an x, y. And we're wanting to turn it into an r theta. Okay, well first let's graph where 2, 6 would end up. My x is a 2. 1, 2. My y is a 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. My ordered pair would be right there. 
Okay, let's find the R first. R is how many rings away from the center you should be. And that is going to be the same as this distance from the origin to that dot. But you already did this with vectors. How did we find how long this was? We did A squared plus B squared and then took the square root, right? It's the same formula. So you're going to do R squared equals 2 squared plus 6 squared. And then 2 squared is 4, 6 squared is 36. So what is 4 plus 36? 40. And if that's r squared, then how do I get to r? Take the square root. So my r is root 40, comma. So notice that I have the first half of my ordered pair. I know my r. Now I need to find my theta. Okay, but I want to remind you that we're covering this right after vectors because the formulas are almost all the same. If I know the y and the x, do you remember that I can inverse tan that to find the theta? It's the exact same thing. So for my theta, I'm going to inverse tan on y over x is 6 over 2. Remember that the inverse tan is what crosses out the tan so that you just have the theta left. So I'm going to do my tan negative 1 on both sides, which means that theta equals something, 6 over 2. Let's see. Um, so if you got 1.24, you're in the wrong mode. So I'm going to switch mine. Remember your mode, you want to be in degrees. Yes. You want to be in degrees. Wait, why did you do that? Why did I do what? Uh, that. So if tan theta is y over x, then to eliminate the tan and solve for theta, I do inverse tan on both sides. No, yeah, I know that, but why did you do it? Um, to find the theta. So I got 71.5. We're going to round that to 72. Okay, but very important, remember with vectors, your first theta is not always your answer. It depends what quadrant you're in. So what quadrant did my ordered pair end up in? Quadrant one, and if you look right there, quadrant one means theta stays the same. So this is your final theta. I'm gonna write that down here in case you look back at it. So it's still 72 degrees. So was any of the you would do the formula, yeah. Okay, now, real quick, just to kind of maybe help answer sort of maybe what I was asking, if you were to graph this, okay, what you would do is go to 72 degrees. So we'll say that'd be like maybe right here-ish. Because remember, we don't want to go quite to 90. And then root 40 is the same as 6. So you would count out to the sixth ring. One, two, three, four, five, six. And that would put your point in the same position. It's just a different method of graphing. Does that make sense? So your R you find with A squared plus B squared, take the square root. And then your theta you find using inverse 10. Okay, we're going to do maybe one more. Because um, I feel like we did vectors so recently that hopefully that will be enough. Okay, but for delta math, this would be your answer right here. Root 40, comma, and then 72. Okay, do we want to do point A, B, or C? Which one? Doesn't matter. B sounds good. Okay, graph where negative 4, negative 2 is. We have a coordinate grid this time. So negative 4, negative 2 would be here. Okay, then in order to turn my xy, which is how the point is originally written, this is an x and a y, into an r comma theta, we're going to need to find r first using basically the magnitude formula, and then theta second using our inverse tan. So when I do my r squared, do I include the negatives or no? No negative. So instead of negative 4, it's positive 4 squared plus 2 squared. 4 squared plus 2 squared gives me 20. 
And then if R squared is 20, R is what? Square root of 20, very good. Now for your homework, if you can perfectly square root it, do it. Okay, but 20 won't, but let's say it was like 25 and you can square root it, then you'd put what that value is, okay? So we got root 20 for our R. Now we need to find our angle. So we're gonna do tan theta equals y over x will be four over two or two over four? Two over four is correct. Now remember, because I'm solving, I don't wanna leave the tan there. How do I get rid of tan? Tan inverse. Tan inverse, very good. Or tan negative one is the same. So tell me what your theta is when you put that in your calculator. 27, second, 10, two over four. Yep, 27 degrees. And then I need to consider my quadrant. So remember, we graphed this point earlier. What quadrant did it end up in? What's the formula for quadrant three? 180 plus theta. So here's what's happening. Let me just remind you that from here to here, is 27 degrees. But the problem is that that's not how direction is measured. You have to measure direction all the way starting at the positive x-axis and then all the way around. So that's why we do 180 and then plus the extra 27. So what is my final direction for this question? Very good. So I'm gonna put quadrant three, 180, plus 27 means that my theta is, what did you say it was, 207? Okay, so then for your delta math answer, we're converting it, you would say that your new ordered pair is root 20 comma 207. Now, just to kind of demonstrate that these end up in the same position, look at your grid in degrees. You would rotate around to 207. Now, do you see that this is 210? So 207 would be just like a little bit closer to 180. So we'll say 207 is here. And then what ring should I be on? Let's find what the square root of 20 is. So the square root of 20 comes out to be about four and a half. So you'd count out one, two, three, four and a half. And you'd place your dot right there. And so you should notice that those are ending up in the same position because it's just a different way of measuring your position on the graph. Um, do we need to do one more or do we feel okay with that? Okay, before we go on, I'm just gonna show you polar graphs. If one day you go on to Calc 2 or Calc 3, you'll see these again. So we're just gonna barely intro into it and then uh, move on. So turn the page. And I want you to turn your calculator into polar mode. So hit the mode button. Hit the mode button and I need you to switch two things. The first one is I need you to go, actually maybe you can leave it in degrees. Let me see if it looks different. Okay, look for polar mode and see if you can find it. Okay, you cannot do degrees. So hit your mode button. I need you to change it to radian. And then I need you to change it to polar. Okay. We all have that switched? Okay, now hit your y equals button and you're gonna notice that instead of y equals, what does it say? R equals, and instead of an X, when you type stuff, you're gonna get a theta, okay? So let's start with this first equation right here. R is gonna equal four sine theta. Will you put it into your calculator and we're just gonna sketch the graph. How do you put a theta? Uh, the X button, and it'll show up as a theta automatically. Okay, so four sine theta. Okay, then hit graph. And what does it look like? A it's a circle. Very good. Okay, and how long is the circle? How many units does it reach up? Four. Do you notice the four in the equation? Okay, that tells you the amplitude of sine and cosine. It tells you the length of what we're going to call petals. 
So this is one petal and it's one, two, three, four long and then draw your circle. Okay, it doesn't have to be perfect. We're just sketching these. Okay, when you're ready, go on to the next equation, adjust your graph, and you'll see why it's called a petal in the second graph. So you're typing in four sine two X or two theta. So four sine two X or two theta. What does it look like? A flower now. Oh, yes, the length of the petals should still be consistent with the amplitude. So see how your amplitude is a four in front? So what I want you to do is count out one, two, three, four. Do your first petal. Then one, two, three, four. Do your second petal. Then one, two, three, four. Do your third petal. And then one, two, three, four, do your last petal. Okay, but the length of the petals should be consistent with the number in front of the sine or cosine. Okay, next one we're going to do is number, uh, we'll just do the top row. So do number seven, six sine three theta. Six sine three theta. Huh? Oh, I am not going to do that one again. Okay, fine. Now, how long are the petals? Six. So notice your first petal is straight down. Let's find the fin. So that'd be just speak. Hard note cards. I don't have your note cards. I need. You need I more? Need you? Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Sorry, that's not the sound a mother makes to her child. But, um, I think, how many do you have? Okay. Three. Three. Okay. 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 Oh, okay. Um, all prime numbers on a uh, they make Wow, I didn't know that. He's smart. He's tall. He's tall and smart. Okay, you did it. Turn over to the back side. We'll do maybe like three more. Okay. Yeah. Yes. All right. Uh, number eleven. Type it in. You'll see a new shape. It won't be a flower. Okay, because there's a plus two that changes the graph. What is it going to be like? It's not a circle. It's not. No. It has. It's a loop de loo. Okay, they're not real names, but it should be this. That's what I got. Yeah. Uh, did you close your theta, your parentheses after your theta? It's a cash. Okay. I usually call it a loop de loo, but it's fine. It looks Okay, a little bee. Oh, it does kind of look like a kidney bee. Okay, now when you do whatever you call the shape, I call it a loop de loo. Okay, but your little loop is how many units tall? That comes from the plus two. And if you measure your big spiral, how tall is it? Well, all the way from here to here. Six, because what's two plus four? Plus four. <laughs> you were so close. <laughs> okay, so your little loop should reach out to here. And your big loop should reach out to two, three, four, five, six. And then just do your best that it's a loop de loo. Okay. This is an odd air balloon. A hot air balloon. Okay, number 12. Graph it. 
Number 12. So just adjust it. Okay, make sure that you close the parentheses on the theta before you put the plus one or it'll come out wrong. That's lady. That's lady Wait, the graph? Okay. Do you see it? Look at that. It's a Barney. What? You have to tilt it. Wait, you have to tilt it like this. Flip the head, then the arms, then the legs. Oh, wow. Okay. So uh, this one should be five. One, two, three, four, five. And one, two, three, four, five. Oh, I counted wrong, but it's fine. Okay. And then your little bitty ones, I don't know how long they are, but just draw them little. Okay. Yes. Okay, then uh, 13, go ahead and graph it. Thirteen, go ahead and graph it. Four plus four cosine. Yes. Yeah, I usually call it a lily pad, uh, but you can call it a heart if you want, very similar. Okay, notice that it's not a circle because it kind of dimples at the origin. So what is four plus four? Eight. Eight, which means that's how long the lily pad is. So we're gonna count out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then dimple and dimple. Okay, number 14, I'm videoing your class, so graph at your own risk. Yeah, wait, what is that? <laughs> kind of looks a little sus. So sorry. Grab it. I'm not going to put it on mine. Graph. <laughs> <laughs> 